Guy Eastman, Senior Analyst for Budgets, along with Dennis Murphy and Julie Tilson, will present the follow-up to the U.S. Defense FY18 Budget First Look, titled U.S. DOD FY18 Budget Deep Dive Analysis. The IHS Jane's Intelligence Briefing Program consists of approximately 40 events during 2017 and is available to all customers of Jane's Intelligence Center and module products, which includes markets forecast. By way of introduction, Guy Eastman is a senior analyst on the IHS Jane's Defense Budget Team and is responsible for Canada, Mexico, and the United States. Guy has been with IHS since 2011 with prior experience in industry, mainly at Lockheed Martin, and 20 years in the U.S. Navy as a surface warfare officer. During Pentagon assignments, he was on Navy staff as action officer, POM coordinator, which included developing documentation for PEDS and RDDS, now known as R2s and P40s. Guy has a BS in aerospace engineering from the U.S. Naval Academy and an MSA in information systems from George Washington University. Um, the purpose uh, today is to basically uh, give an analysis of the, uh, the DOD budget that was submitted on the 23rd of uh, May, uh, just a few weeks back, uh, and uh, in accordance with the, uh, the events that have occurred previously, which are listed on the screen there, back in 2011 we had the Budget Control Act. On the 5th of May of this year, we had a final uh, Fiscal Year 17 Appropriations Act, uh, and then we had a skinny budget on the 16th of March, which involved all of the various agencies uh, for DOD, and that was for the Fiscal uh, 18 budget. And then finally, we had the PBR, the President's Budget Request, on the 23rd of May, as I, as I mentioned. So the summary up front then is the, uh, the DOD budget request PBR was submitted at a, a value of $639.1 billion. Uh, that's the discretionary part. I'll talk more about that. And it's about 3.25% of the, uh, the GDP, gross domestic product. And this is a necessary first step to restore the military readiness and then rebuild the uh, depleted um, the military that uh, we've been uh, hearing about lately. So. The analysis approach uh, of today will be uh, talk about the situation and the environment we find ourselves in. We'll talk about some of the, uh, the the values and the budget baseline at the top line. We'll show some displays up front of, of the budget uh, values. Uh, then we're going to have a couple overviews, one for cyber operations and the other for simulation and training. Following that, we'll get into the service modules, uh, the resource drivers uh, that, that uh, have the most impact on the budget. And then we'll, we'll start wrapping it up with the uh, unfunded priority list, trends, issues, and a summary. Uh, you can see here that uh, the GDP is at about $19.9 trillion. We have a lot of national debt at about $19.9 trillion as well. Uh, the budget uh, outlay is going to be, uh, for the U.S. government, about $4.1 trillion. I mentioned the $639 billion for the discretionary, but when you add some other things like the D uh, Department of Energy, and then SA and the uh, the mandatory, you, you get up to about $677 billion for DOD at the 050 level. Uh, the, the deficit is going to come in around $560 billion, we think, somewhere in there. Uh, I mentioned the Budget Control Act earlier. Uh, it is still the law, and so sequestration is still in effect if, if it comes to that. Uh, however, uh, because of the continuing resolution since this year, uh, 13 and sequestration and a number of other things like a low budget submit fiscal year 15, uh, the DOD has lost uh, about $600 billion in buying power uh, so far. And lastly, uh, the, the, there are some issues that are facing Congress as they, uh, they deal with this proposed uh, reduction in the non-defense spending. Uh, in, in yellow, I indicate the, uh, the budget that's before Congress. Now, these dollars are current dollars or then-year dollars. And you can see that the uh, the base budget submit was $574.5 million or billion dollars, and the OCO or Overseas Contingency Operation portion was 64.6 billion, and that all adds up to the 69, or correction, the 639.1 billion dollars. It that turns out to be be about 677 billion when you add the rest of the 050 budget. So if you subtract the 14.8 uh, supplemental that was uh, approved. Uh, and, and then you uh, look at the two numbers there, the 583.7 and the 639. It's about a 9% uh, growth uh, over those uh, two years. Our, our product, uh, JDB, Jane's Defense Budget, uh, uh, goes through 104 countries, and I take that data. These dollars are constant 2017 dollars since we use constant dollars in JDB. 
And you can see on the left, uh, the uh, the blue bar represents the uh, the U.S. budget, and fi these are fiscal year 16 um, comparison, uh, and uh, that that was 636 billion. Uh, the next 12 nations, and you can see them on the right: China, Russia, India, UK, Saudi, Japan, France, Germany, South Korea, Australia, Brazil, and India, uh, Italy. When you when you add them up, uh, you get the green bar, which is uh, 631 billion or about 39.7% of the world. And then lastly, you have the rest of the world at 321 billion. So basically, this, this shows you the magnitude of the U.S. DOD budget. Uh, I listed some facts underneath there. The global budget's about uh, just shy of $1.6 trillion for the 104 countries. Uh, uh, U.S. Uh, DOD is about 40% of the globe, 70% uh, in RDT&E, Research, Development, Test, and Evaluation and about 72% uh, of the resources uh, go to NATO. As you can see from this slide, uh, there's been rather robust funding increases over time in DOD cyberspace operations funding. The request this year of $8 billion represents a 19% increase over last year's enacted uh, request. And over time, you see as well that the five-year CAGR is an impressive 20.9%. This year, the Army continues to fund defensive cyber operations, infrastructure, and cyber training programs. The Navy and Air Force fun focus their funding plans on improving cyber resiliency and increasing cyber mission force training and development. Uh, I have taken some representative programs across DOD-wide and the services that I'll, I'll briefly discuss for you. We'll, we'll go left to the right, top to bottom. The first one you see is DARPA's RDT&E Information Assurance and Survivability Program, which is the focus program for cybersecurity efforts. There are a number of programs that reside within the project, and they're in various stages of research and development. DARPA Cyber Focus, uh, this over the next five years, is on hardening systems against attacks, operating through cyber attacks, and winning in the cyber domain. And my analysis is that the focus over the next five years for them will be the second, operating through cyber attacks, or this resilience piece that I mentioned uh, in the previous slide. First, we'll start out by looking at some aggregated figures for the fiscal year 18 budget request from the perspective of the major simulation and training programs. Uh, as you would expect, with a focus on restoring readiness, the overall picture for simulation program shows a positive trend. So the total fiscal year 18 budget request for a representative set of significant simulation and training programs is around $2.5 the total um, compared to the fiscal year 17 enacted amount for that same set of programs increased for every one of the services as well as defense-wide. We'll take a look at the, pro at the programs on a platform versus non-platform basis, which helps to provide some insight into where the priorities lie. Um, the Air Force training programs, as you can see, are nearly evenly split between the platform-specific and the other uh, programs, and that's the number in parentheses next to the dollar figure there. Um, this is because the Air Force has a very large um, base of existing simulators, which of course require ongoing maintenance and, and upgrade support. Uh, this analysis uh, took into consideration uh, about 2,100 uh, PPAs, uh, programs, projects, and activities in the R&D and procurement, and about 400 in O&M for about uh, 2,500 uh, Program. So the first uh, up is the Army, and you can see the aviation assets and some of the ground vehicles there. On the bottom uh, in the standard chart, uh, I compared the fiscal year 13 and fiscal year 18 uh, force structure, and you can see that uh, over those five years, uh, there's 14 less brigade combat teams in the Army active and uh, two less in, uh, in, uh, in the combat aviation brigades and also two less in the uh, brigade combat teams in, in the uh, National Guard. As, as before, uh, the Virginia class uh, submarine is uh, way up there at uh, $35 uh, billion uh, over the FIDIP. Uh, the sum of the classifieds at $24 billion. Uh, the DDG-51, which is a long-term uh, program, uh, we're up to 62 destroyers and counting. Uh, that's um, uh, up there uh, in, in the top uh, list. This is a very capital-intensive uh, service. Uh, you have six ships and two aircraft in this list. You look at the uh, the aircraft procurement plan, uh, in the short term view. Uh, you can see that it was it was going gangbusters from fiscal year 14 to uh, to 17, basically. But in in 18, it's it's coming down again. Uh, but still with a four uh, a 12 percent four year CAGR. So it's still fairly healthy. 
And uh, as I said, uh, the big three are driving it. As you can see, the, the blue bars for the F-35, the orange bars for the tanker, et cetera. So uh, a lot of help there. Um, again, these are only new, new aircraft and UAVs. Uh, I now uh, present a comparison of the uh, 16 through 18 service appropriations. This is the short-term view uh, for the four services, uh, essentially. If you look at, and they're all on the same uh, vertical axis, they're all 40 billion from zero to 40 billion on the vertical axis. So, so you can compare uh, 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 apples to apples. Uh, 12th of June, uh, the uh, Milcon Veterans Affairs and, and Related Agencies bill was approved by the uh, House Subcommittee. So that's at least uh, that always gets out there first. Uh, a couple of days ago, uh, uh, Mac Thornbury, the chairman of the uh, Hask uh, from Texas, uh, released the uh, National Defense Authorization Act proposal, HR 2810. Uh, also, uh, the HACD began its markup of the Defense Appropriations Bill. So the good news is the work has started, and uh, but it has a long way to go. Uh, yesterday, uh, the full committee of the SASC was to mark up the uh, NDAA. Uh, today, the uh, House uh, is, is full committee is, is supposed to start its action sometime in July. I don't have any dates yet, but the, both the full committee, uh, committee for the House Appropriations Committee and the Senate Appropriations Committee need to mark up their versions of the bill as well. Uh, there is a congressional uh, August research, uh, recess from 31 July to 4 September. There's some talk that the Congress will uh, continue working through the recess and not go home, but uh, it's possible. Um, we'll have to see what happens there. I'm not, I'm not sure what, what's going to happen. Uh, it, it would be good to see them do their work, obviously. 5 September, uh, at any rate, they got to be back by, by 5 September to, uh, to enter the budget battle. And at that time, only 26 days will remain prior to the 1 October start of fiscal year 18, all right? And 1 October, as it says there, is, is we're either going to have a fiscal year 18 Appropriations Act, that's about a 1% probability, and 99% of probabilities we're going to have a continuing resolution, as we always do. We look forward to welcoming you to future online briefings. Our next briefing will be our annual Global Defense Trade Report scheduled for Thursday, 29 June. Thank you for joining us and have a good rest of the day.